Our next speaker um, is Nuala Donovan from uh, Guys and St Thomas's, and she's going to be talking to you about a research grant that is funded by IIH UK that um, came out of feedback from the um, support groups talking about how much people struggled with exercise and also from my personal experience about how much I struggled with exercise as the research rep and also uh, from our previous research rep, Crystal, as well. It was something that came up in the um, uh, James Lind Alliance priority setting partnership as well about how challenging people found. So we were very delighted for the application from Nula's team at Guys and Thomas's and be delighted to provide the funding. So I'll ask Shelley to pop over to Nula now and uh, I'll mute myself and uh, we can hear uh, from Nula. Thank you. Thanks, Amanda. Um, I'm going to try and share my screen. I'm, I'm not that savvy with um, with Zoom, but I will try my best. So hopefully that will come up. Oh, yep, that's come up. Let me just go back to that. So I'm going to um, seem to be on the screen blocking all my little text. So um, Sorry, I'm in the clinic room at the minute, so I've got my headphones and everything on. So um, as Amanda nicely in introduced me, um, so we were very successful in getting this grant and support from, from IHEK and HOPE um, to look at how physiotherapy can best support people living with IIH. And um, so I'm just going to give you a bit of an update on kind of where we're at with that at the moment. Um, so uh, just a bit about me. So I think I'll introduce that on the next slide, actually. But yeah, I'm calling in from, from Guys and St Thomas's in London. Um, so just to go through a little bit of what I'll discuss today, I'll give you an introduction to kind of what the study involves, who I am, um, and what our current service looks like in terms of IIH. I'll go through with you kind of where we were with the, the plan and the aim of the study, um, where I've got to with regards to looking at the current literature um, regarding more specifically IIH and physical activity. Um, talk you through a bit of some patient feedback and some interviews that we've can, um, constructed and then also some future plans going forwards. So just a little bit of an introduction. So the, the talk will describe the current research that we're, we're doing in our service at Guys and St Thomas's. Um, we were successful in getting the grant um, in December last year um, and the aim was to review what the kind of current service, um, service is doing and the needs then of physiotherapy and IIH management. So who I am, so um, Fanula Donovan or Nula is what most people call me. I'm actually a neurology outpatient physiotherapist at Guys and St Thomas's and part of my role therefore is being involved in part of the IIH team here. Um, so IIH and physiotherapy were kind of brought together in this clinic about three to four years ago, previously by another colleague of mine. Um, initially she was involved to kind of give a presentation at an IIH study day we had here about the importance of exercise and how that can be kind of interwoven into the management of, of IIH. And then from that, she would then see patients individually one-to-one -one living with IIH to give a little bit more support. Um, as we started to see a large number of referrals coming in, we changed and, and I took over the service, we changed the way that we kind of construct things and, and how the service was looking. So we actually introduced probably coming up to a year ago now, um, and a one off one hour education session, which was a kind of 15 minute presentation run by myself um, and then some question and answer sessions for everybody in, in the group to get involved in. Um, and so it's a one off session that we run once a month. And the idea being after that, um, patients can can go and incorporate the, the plans that we've suggested or the, the advice that we've given. Um, and then we would construct uh, or complete, sorry, outcome measures prior to the session. We would then look at the outcome measures, ideally a month later, three months later, and six months later, and see if there was any, any changes. The outcome measures that we used was a quality of life questionnaire, which is the EQ5DL, um, and also the um, International Physical Activity Questionnaire Short Answer. So that looks at the amount of physical activity people are currently doing. And then hopefully we would see some, some improvements coming up from that. Um, if people feel 
or felt sorry that they needed a little bit more input then they did also have the option of still being referred through for a one-to-one -one session with me um, and we also run a gym group here once a week that's face to face and once a week that's virtual that people are also invited to come along to and they can get referred through for that it's six weeks that they get and the idea is that it builds confidence for them to know what they need to do if they go into a gym or how they can manage their, their physical activity at, at home. So as I say, the project, um, we awarded the grant in December 2021, and that was joint with, with HOPE and IIH UK, um, and it's for a year. Um, that has freed me up to have kind of four hours a week to really focus on getting this research done. So the aims of the, the project is to analyse the existing national and global guidance on physical activity for people with chronic conditions, including things such as headaches, and see if we can apply that to people living with um, IIH to then try and develop practical written guidance on physical activity, which we can incorporate into the HOPE programme the, for people living with IH. See if we can give exercise guidance supported by relevant uh, visual media in terms of what patients might want and if that can then be embedded into the IH UK website and HOPE programme um, to try and liaise closely then with HOPE around this, um, creating maybe co-creation sessions and then identify any gaps in the knowledge within the area. So that could be an idea for future research and future funding needs. So a bit about the study and the plan. So what are we doing? So the, the timetable that you can see on the left is kind of a bit of a rough guidance of what our aims were starting from January this year. So the initial stage was looking very much at what the literature said, um, liaising then as well with professional networks around this. Following on from that, we were then initially uh, planning to do a focus group. Um, but when I spoke with our research and, and development team at the hospital, they suggested that because this is such a new area, um, probably it was better, first of all, to do a one to one interview and actually focus group probably wouldn't be a priority initially. But to do the one to one interview, identify any themes and then a focus group once we perhaps make some changes to our service could be a really useful tool. So we ended up changing it to a one to one interview. Um, so the next stage was then writing up the summary of the interviews, which I'll go on to do um, and then see where we go from that. So in terms of physical activity sessions, so we, we offer them, as I say, live here, but it's whether or not um, people living with IH would like a pre-recorded ones that they can go and do in their own time and things. Um, I'll go through kind of the next stage moving on from that but the next thing would be reaching a larger number of people with a questionnaire based on the information from the one-to-one -one interviews, um, input these changes based on that questionnaire and then write up some guidance for the HOPE programme and then see where we can go moving forwards. Um, we also, midway through this, um, were successful in getting a poster accepted for the British Lifestyle Medicine um, Conference, which is next week. So that's quite exciting. So that's that's gone through um, as well. So a little bit about the literature review. So unsurprisingly, um, very little information regarding physical activity in IH when we look at the um, kind of journals and things. So the little table on the right hand side shows you the search terms that I looked at. So we were looking at um, idiopathic intracranial hypertension or IH um, alongside exercise, physical activity or activity, and then guide guidelines, guidance or recommendations. Um, we also tried to like broad, uh, broaden that search because nothing really came from that. So I then incorporated looking at um, weight loss, weight reduction or BMI reduction. The databases that I searched were Medline, PubMed, um, uh, Sinal and AMED. And from that 15 articles were um, excluded because they were duplicates. Articles that retrie uh, retrieved from me kind of scanning through the abstracts were three and um, 12 were excluded as they were actually relating more to medical management of IIH, not um, more physical side. Of the three that were found, none of them were relevant. Um, so none of them were actually, when I read into it, were talking about physical activity or anything. So the next stage was to try and look at some more specialist or professional networks, which I'll go on to talk about in a minute. So that's things like um, NICE guidelines, Chartered Society of Physiotherapy guidelines on, on obesity management, looking at migraine trusts, um, uh, Public Health England and IAH UK, just to see if there's general guidance that we could perhaps fit towards this. So the first one that I had a look at was the NICE guidelines for the management of obesity. Um, and they suggest that initial, initial management of obesity should really focus on a variety of diet and physical activity interventions. Um, the Chartered Society of Physiotherapy 
really advocate um, for physiotherapists being involved in weight management. They feel that with the knowledge and the skills that we've got, we're kind of in the prime position to be able to support people with this. Um, and they actually introduced something called a campaign um, called Love Activity Hate Exercise. So it's just trying to really encourage people to get moving and explain that does not have to be exercise, that doesn't have to be going out for a run, going to the gym, but anything that just gets you moving around and, and sitting less. When we broaden that a little bit more to perhaps look at things like um, con kind of common symptoms of people living with IH and complaints, we looked at migraines being a big one. Um, the Migraine Trust suggests that moderate exercise could actually decrease the frequency and severity of migraines and actually regular exercise can help in some cases, cases to prevent migraines. Um, in addition to that, the American Migraine Foundation also said that regular exercise can decrease the frequency of this. Um, Tinnitus is sometimes reported as well in people living with IAH and the British Tinnitus Association suggested that regular exercise can increase people's general quality of life um, and also can be quite a useful um, coping mechanism to help with distractions of not focusing so much on that tinnitus. And then finally, the World Health Organization um, and, and most other areas, uh, the Sports Medicine Association and everywhere, really recommend, a, uh, recommend this table that I've got here on the, on the right-hand side. So the suggestion is that per week you need to be getting more active, but be doing at least, so minimum of 150 minutes of moderate intensity exercise per week. Now, moderate intensity is anything that kind of um, gets your heart rate and your breathing rate up a bit, but you could still hold a conversation with somebody. They could alternatively, if they were feeling a bit more uh, energized and able, uh, they could do a minimum of 75 minutes of vigorous intensity. So that is breathing fast, wouldn't be able to talk, heart rate really increasing. They also say that you could do a combination of these. Um, in addition to that, it's recommended that we add some, some strength building activities in there at least twice a week. That could be a formal strength training. So kind of at workouts at home, workouts at the gym, but that could also incorporate functional tasks that you do at home, carrying heavy bags, taking the rubbish out, gardening, and things like that. The biggest thing that they suggested was trying to minimize sedentary time. So that's a big thing. And one of the questions we ask in the um, one of the outcome measures is about how much time per day do you think you spend sitting? So hopefully, even if we don't necessarily see activity time increases so much in that, we will see that people are sitting less. Um, so part of what we did was um, some patient feedback. So at the end of the uh, education session, we asked people to to fill in a questionnaire of what they thought about the, the session and what could we look at improving. So unfortunately, so far, we've only managed to get 12 patients to respond. Um, of that, though, 11 people said they really enjoyed the session and also from the session, they better understood the importance of exercise in their condition. 100% found the session useful and 10% said they were highly likely to change their exercise habits based on this advice. Now, that's brilliant. That's really, really good. It means we're saying the right things. But what we don't know yet is how true that is going forwards. Yes, they might highly likely be changing, but have they changed? So that's the next kind of stages that we've been looking at. Um, so as I mentioned, we we looked into interviews versus focus groups and interviews, one to one interviews were deemed to be most appropriate um, initially. Uh, the little lady's head with the, the writing in is just a few of the things that kind of snap words that came out of the interviews, but I'll go on and just go through that a little bit more in the next one. So five people um, were interviewed from the IAH clinic. Now, some of them had come through my education sessions already. Some of them had never had physiotherapy input at all. So we wanted to get a really good mix so we could try and remove some of the bias of people that have perhaps already attended the, the physio session. So kind of a few points that people found helpful were they liked um, kind of small groups because they found them less intimidating and they could learn from others' experiences and they found it really supportive. Um, they all mentioned that weight or the importance of weight loss had been discussed and they found that helpful. They found there was really good support from the various teams around diagnosis. Uh, goal setting uh, thankfully was discussed and they found that helpful and they found a mixture of goals from weight loss to kind of symptom management was the main things highlighted. They, um, a lot of them said that the direction to the IAH UK website was really helpful, um, as well as doing things more practically like counting steps to try and increase their activity. And they felt that 50 to 60 minutes is a good length of time for any education sessions around it. A few concerns or less helpful comments or, or less helpful things that they found from the service was that some people found that actually being in groups made it very difficult to voice their anxieties because they didn't have that confidence to be able to, to speak out of how they're feeling. Um, 
they reported that diagnosis or when they were told their diagnosis it was quite daunting and it was a lot to take in um they found that emotionally that was really hard um it added quite a lot of stress and they were quite fearful about actually what that might mean for their health and then their life in general they felt that the IAH with regards to that more emotional or social aspects wasn't really discussed and there wasn't really support around it and their main barriers or limitations to exercise they found were uh, body image concerns, pain, busy personal life, lack of support um, or other people to be able to exercise with and slightly worrying is um, a few of them didn't really understand the role of physio in IIH so that's where hopefully we can start to, to change that understanding. So the main themes then that were identified with regards to physiotherapy input um, was the lack of mental health or social support regarding the impact of their diagnosis and their symptoms. And they would really like the opportunity to discuss that a bit more or maybe be offered counselling or other areas that they could go down. Um, as I said, people are uncertain of the role of physio in their condition. Um, they found that maybe information leaflets or online resources regarding exercise could be quite helpful. An online forum with the option to ask questions with a professional would be helpful. And they said that could be live. So kind of having a set time that was going to happen or even the option to kind of write their questions in and the professional could come back to that at a later date and feed it so they could read through it. Um, they thought maybe motivational text messages would help to increase their adherence to exercise um, and the how frequently they want that is a question that we we want to have a look into a bit more and they also found that pre-recorded exercise sessions specific to people living with IAH would be useful um, and they quite like a variety of body shapes so some people said that seeing kind of your physio fatigue, um, physique on there would be they'd find that just a bit daunting and they wouldn't find it very motivational whereas other people said actually having that body shape made them more motivated to want to change um, so that's another a really interesting area that we want to look a bit more into. So that's kind of where we've got to so far. So then the, the next steps would be doing a bit more um, investigations to see if the information we've given those education sessions has carried over. So as I say, we were hoping to repeat the outcome measures in every one month, three months and six months. And I was sending those links out. So we've got a kind of an IP address that they can they can fill it in. It's quite quick. But as with a lot of things, we're finding that people aren't really responding. So one of the ways that we've tried to kind of get over this hurdle is we use a service here called Doctor Doctor, who send out regular text messages about patients' appointments and things. And I met up with somebody in their team who has been able to make sure that the appointment uh, text message for the education session gets also linked to sending out the, question, the questionnaire link. And then he arranged it so that that would be resent at one month, three months and six months. Now, that only started about a month ago. So we're, we're wanting to see if that has made a change. We also have just introduced in the last since the last education session, um, we have a physiotherapy technician on our team. And so he's actually having patients booked in for a telephone appointment with him for him to ring and actively get them to do that questionnaire with him. So we're hoping that we can start to gather more information because obviously it's brilliant that we're doing it. It's brilliant that we're getting feedback, but is it working? And if it's not working, do we need to think about something else? So from the, the themes that I mentioned in the one-to-one -one interviews that we found, I'm now um, just in the process of compiling a short, short answer questionnaire that, um, we're planning to send out to a wider group. So IHUK have kindly said they'll help to support to disseminate this, hoping that that will give us a wider kind of viewpoint and a larger scale of what it is that people want. So we can then own in on what the main area is and perhaps look at changing that. So that might be doing some recorded sessions of exercise for people living with IH. That might be sending out these motivational text messages. Um, so that's going to be the next port of call. And then looking at it on a larger scale, as we say, there's, there's such little research that is done in terms of the literature around this. So that would be a really nice but rather large area to look into and um, to identifying kind of whether or not we can incorporate exercise guidance from these other areas such as the the migraines the um the tinnitus looking at fatigue and things as well um and pop that on there and also maybe to look a little bit more into the barriers of exercise so I know IH UK have done a lot of surveys which have been really helpful when we're looking at what we're doing um and to seeing perhaps is there a way that we can incorporate these barriers to try and overcome them with what we're doing as well um, so just to summarise, there are very little studies or guidance specifically aimed at people living with IIH and physical activity. People living with IIH have identified that education regarding physical activity and IIH uh, provided by a physiotherapist would be, with good knowledge of the condition, would be helpful um, and important and was likely to have a positive effect on their exercise habits. 
Um, but further potential modes of support to increase physical activity have been highlighted, and that's the next stage of looking at it. So, um, oh, okay, missed the last slide, but effectively, there we are. So, um, thank you yet to Dr. Wong, who's our IIH consultant here and leading on on the service. Um, Alexandra Curtis, who's my team lead and physio, who's really supportive as well. IIH UK and Hope for all kind of your guidance and support. Um, that is my rabbit on the side there. I thought he'd feature. So uh, thank you for your time and any questions. I'll just stop that share. Thank you so much, Nula, for um, talking to us about exercise. Um, I know it's something very, you know, it's something very close to my heart. Um, and it's actually something that came up in the, um, chat groups yesterday. Um, was someone posting and saying that you know that they really struggle to exercise with IIH so any information that you can you're working on to help people then that's fantastic um, if anyone has any questions for Nula please do pop them in the chat or the question and answer um, session what we're hoping that we will be doing for us in the future is coming together with with hope to provide some gu best guidance on physical activity for people with IOH um, and we with you as soon as it's available lovely so I can't see any questions in the chat um, we will be taking lunch now and then coming back oh here we go has anyone talked about heat intolerance during exercise bending over as a barrier so patients have said to me that they've had some anxieties and wondered about that as well um I'm not obviously an IH sole expert um so I did speak with Dr Wong and she said from her perspective there aren't any concerns about safety and people doing certain exercises but people do a lot of my patients did report that when they do bend over that they find that that can bring on their symptoms. I think there is a study being done in Birmingham at the moment, isn't there, looking at the impact of exercise, I think on an exercise bike and the if there's any changes to pressure when they're doing that sort of exercise. Um, at the moment, the advice that we kind of give them around it is we try to find other forms of physical activity that they can be doing that doesn't involve bending over. And I think the big thing is about helping people to identify what they are able to do. So we can't say, yes, we can get rid of your, your headaches or we can get rid of this. But in, in all my areas of physio, so in the neuro side as well, we talk about what things are you able to do and how can we support you around making that more physically active. So that might be the first port of call whilst we're trying to support their weight loss and, and to bring it down to a place where they can then do slightly more intense prax activity. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, I haven't had any update from Birmingham on what happened with I know at the time they were hoping to do um, some work with pressure monitors um, and having a look at what uh, changes in pressure you saw during exercise and I think what you're saying Nula, is absolutely right that at the moment we don't have some of that physiological evidence so it's about looking at what you can do um, which doesn't exacerbate your own symptoms yeah Thank you. Other guidance that we can get for people. And as that evidence increases, we will obviously share with you. Thank you. 